an upper-class Vancouver private school, an orphanage in Newfoundland. On the surface, these places couldn't have been more different, but they had something in common. I lived in fear every day. I spent every day in Mount Cashel in fear. A 10-year-old little boy in fear. Colin Wilson and Kevin Little have never met. They grew up on opposite ends of the country, but they have one degree of separation. Every day, I was always looking over my shoulder, afraid that Brother Burke was going to come and grab me. Burke had me scared on a daily basis. The Christian Brothers of Ireland ran schools and institutions around the globe. They were something less than priests, but were revered as religious leaders in Catholic education. They wielded authority, often without mercy. I'm going to tell you the story of stuff that happened to me that people are not going to believe. As horrific as it may sound, it is true. Like many kids at Mount Cashel, Kevin Little came from a broken home in rural Newfoundland. His parents were unable to care for all the kids in a house without running water or electricity, so Little joined about 90 other boys at Mount Cashel Orphanage in St. John's. Little was placed in a dormitory under the care of Brother Joseph Burke. Burke has always denied abusing kids, though he's been accused by at least eight men in criminal and civil court. Little says Burke would often drag him away from the others, taking him to his private office, alone and scared. Well, you'd make me take off my clothes. And he, um, he'd make me, sometimes I'd be in the nude, and sometimes he'd, he'd, he'd flick my um, genital area. He would make me lift my arms and pinch the skin and haul the skin away. That's what he did on a regular basis. And I was a frightened dead as a man for every little thing I'd done. In the 1970s, people weren't ready to believe the Christian brothers could do any wrong. The truth was, dozens of kids at Mount Cashel were being abused, and some tried to tell the authorities. In 1975, Bobby Connors gave police a statement alleging that brothers English, Ralph, Burke and Kenny were abusing boys at Mount Cashel Orphanage. The door was closed. If only they'd listened. Bob Connors was at Mount Cashel with his little brothers, Darren and Greg. He gave a statement to police in 1975, and that statement was buried as part of a cover-up by the brothers, police and justice department. The investigating officer pointed the blame to police chief John Lawler. Mr. Lawler, you seem to be passing the blame on either to the officers beneath you or to the officials above you. That's what you're, that's what you're saying, not me. You're saying this. So you... I'm not blaming anyone. Lawler's own son was a Christian brother, later accused of abusing boys at Mount Cashel in the 1960s. The cover-up haunts Bob Connors to this day. We told our stories, and I think the bottom line was I don't think anybody believed us, right? So I know that eventually these brothers were moved or transported or or taken somewhere else, and, and we figured that was the end of it, right? So, but, but then we find out afterwards that they were taken to other schools and moved to other areas, and all they were doing was just spreading out, spreading the disease as far as I was concerned, right? So. 10 years later, Colin Wilson was a grade nine student at Vancouver College. His class clown antics caught the attention of his teacher, Joseph Burke. Wilson says Burke took him and three other boys under his wing. They'd meet in his office at the back of the cafeteria, one at a time while the others waited outside. I'd get hit and it was probably up to ten times um, over the pants with, uh, with his hand. That was stage one. Stage two was if you, he felt that you needed more punishment, he would pull out, uh, he would make you pull out of the top drawer a piece of wood, probably the consistency of a hockey stick, um, maybe that long, and pull that out. Uh, again, assume the position you'd lay across his desk and um, he would hit you with that, which was way more painful than his hand. And he would always threaten you with stage three, which was the bare bottom spanking. Wilson says Burke went to step three one night in December, 1985, 
It was too late to stay in his office, so Wilson says they locked up the school and left. We got into his van. It's dark. We drive into the Mar Marpool area to his apartment. He then uh, asked me to drop my pants, which I did, and I stood there in my underwear, and he said all of it. Um, at this point, I'm like crying, snot and everything coming out of my nose, and put me across his lap and um, hit me. Um, yeah, probably the normal 10 times, and, and then made me go back, dress myself, and uh, we got back into his, uh, uh, into his van. He dropped me at the closest bus stop that would get me back to Richmond, and, um, and I never told my parents. Wilson says those experiences followed him after Vancouver College. He was diagnosed with anxiety in the 90s, and he battled addiction over the past 30 years. I just recently did a stint in a, in a recovery center for alcohol abuse. Um, and when I was in there, I had to go back into my past, and I had to find, we did a session where I had to find traumas in my past. Wilson says that inspired him to see whatever happened to Burke, but he wasn't prepared for what he found. Fifteen years after the cover-up, the story broke. I am not certain whether... A judicial inquiry led to charges against 14 men. Burke was convicted of assaulting four children, including Kevin Little and Bob Connor's youngest brother, Darren. However, all but one conviction was overturned by the Supreme Court of Canada. On the one remaining, Burke got a conditional discharge for common assault. No criminal record. I don't feel ecstatic about it. I'm still very angry that it happened in the first place. That I was found guilty of things that I don't even think about. No, I'm, I gave seven years of my life to that province and they took seven more. The Supreme Court questioned the boys' stories, saying Little in particular was, quote, too bizarre to accept. Today, Little says the pain of it all nearly killed him. He blew a career in the military and attempted suicide when he was 18. But like I didn't understand. Because I was physically an adult, I was mentally still a child. Like I never had a chance to grow up. I wasn't had that, never had a chance to be taught to be safe and secure like a child should be. Darren Connors was also wrecked by the outcome. Joe Burke's a piece of garbage. Joe Burke should go to jail. Joe Burke did what he did. You know, if he was here, you know, I've, you know, I said it to his face in court and I'll say it to him again anytime, anywhere, any place. The man did what he did. He did it to me, he did it to a number of other people. He's a statistic bastard. Bob Connor says his little brother never recovered from Mount Cashel or the sting of being disbelieved. Darren struggled. Darren and my other brother, Greg, they both struggled big time, right? I think because I latched on and I got married and I had support, they never had the support like I had, right? So I think it was hard for them, and, and especially relationship-wise. They couldn't have relationships, right, either one of them. So I think they bonded together. They moved in together and bonded with each other and that was their support. That bond was eternal. Greg Connors died by suicide in 2014, and Darren followed in 2016, in the same room where his brother died. I think Greg and Darren just gave up, right? They just, there was no other way out for them. And eventually they took their lives, right? And it all had to do because of what happened in Mount Cashel. Of the brothers convicted, none were able to return to teaching, except Joseph Burke. Fresh off his conditional discharge, he returned to Vancouver College. He taught until 2013, when he retired amid an investigation into his disciplinary tactics. Mount Cashel was torn down in 1992 to make way for a supermarket 
This small memorial is all that's left of the old orphanage, but there's strands of Mount Cashel that keep stretching out across the country. 65 men and counting are now suing six former brothers who left Mount Cashel for Vancouver College and St. Thomas More Collegiate. They're also suing the schools and the Archdiocese of Vancouver. Colin Wilson is one of those men, but he says he doesn't want any money. He just wants to know how this could have happened. I don't know if you know Sermon of the Mount, what, uh, where Jesus preached, beware of wolves in sheep's clothing. Well, that's what Mr. Burke was. He, he was able to manipulate the situation and, and be your friend, and then on the flip side, turn into this evil man. And, and um, he's a very sick individual. He's caused a lot of pain for a lot of people. Ryan Cook, CBC News, St. John's.